three, two, one, cut. <laughs> Hello friends in YouTube land. Today's video is a little bit different. Uh, it's about headaches that occur on one side of the head, unilateral headaches, sometimes called side locked headaches. And what I want to do is instead of going through all of the uh, formal diagnostic criteria for these different headaches is to kind of breeze through about 17 and a half headache types. The purpose is if you know about it then you can talk about it with your healthcare provider and uh, I'm not going to present them in any particular order in terms of importance except that the first one we're going to talk about of course is migraine. Now viewer discretion is advised because you don't want to look at my head pointing out where things happen all the time. So I've got a volunteer. We're going to welcome Mr. Bubbles. So this is Mr. Bubbles. Mr. Bubbles was uh, from Halloween a few years ago, which is a pretty big deal at the, the household here. So good morning, Mr. Bubbles. Thank you for volunteering. First thing we're going to talk about is migraine. That's kind of the big one, the obvious one, which may be a headache on one side. And some people will say, I always have a headache on, on one side of the head, and it's always the same side. Other people say, well, mostly it's this side, sometimes it'll shift to that side. I'm not going to go over the formal migraine diagnostic criteria. They're widely available on the, uh, the web, in YouTube, etc. But that is the most, probably the most frequent uh, headache that will be just on one side of the head. Moving on. Uh, something I see with some regularity is called greater occipital neuralgia. So on Mr. Bubbles back here, there's a nerve that comes out called the greater occipital nerve. And it, and it runs up here. And, the, and depending on the person, they may actually go all the way to above the eye. So people will sometimes come in and say, I have this headache here, I have headaches here, or, or up here, and they wax and they wane, and sometimes they're sharp and jabbing. And if you go poke on that nerve where it pops out between a couple of muscles, uh, people may say, ah, that, you know, that, that, that recreates my pain. So it may have a headache up here, but it can come from back here. Greater occipital neuralgia, treated with ice, medicines, and uh, cortisone injections, among other things. Second neuralgia is a supraorbital neuralgia. There's a nerve here, comes out in this little notch you can feel, and it comes up here. If that gets inflamed for whatever reason, you tend to have headaches up in here. It can be kind of uh, sharp at times. Number four, not very common uh, in terms of a headache syndrome, is trigeminal neuralgia. Now, the trigeminal nerve has three branches, and, and one, we call it V1, it's a long story why it's a V, uh, V2, V3. So sometimes people have this jabbing, intermittent electrical pain right up here on Mr. Bubbles from this trigeminal nerve, it's, uh, we often think of it as a facial pain more than a, a headache really, but somebody could, could call it that. Number five, uh, and this is something that I actually have had myself, temporalis muscle pain. Now, Mr. Bubbles, when he chews on the flesh of his victims, uh, has to close his jaw, and one of the muscles that helps with that is a muscle that runs right up underneath, right underneath the, uh, the uh, arch of the cheek here. And sort of fans out uh, to this area. That muscle can become inflamed and sore like any muscle. And uh, people will often say, oh, when I chew or I eat, and I get this headache there. And sometimes it's just the muscle. Number seven. We're going to skip over six. I'll come back. Come number seven is temporal arteritis, which is not the muscle so much, but the, the, uh, the uh, artery that's going through to this area is becoming inflamed for immune reasons. And this is something we see in older folks, and it's kind of potentially a dangerous thing because it can lead to, sh to the arteries that go to the eye, which are inside, can become blocked off, and people can go blind, and it's, it's not a good thing. So. Temporal arteritis will sometimes cause a one-sided headache. Number, going back to number six, temporomandibular joint pains. The, the joint right here on Mr. Bubbles is a joint, and it's a complex joint. And like all joints, it can have arthritis, 
or the tissues around it, the capsule or the attachments can become inflamed and it will tend to hurt up into this area. So if you have just uh, temporal TMJ or uh, temporal mandibular joint problems, you can have a one-sided headache. Now there are a couple of other headache syndromes, uh, numbers 9 and 10, chronic paroxysmal hemicrania and hemicrania continua. that a lot of people don't know about that people have this Mr. Bubbles will have this constant pain here and it's often kind of low level nagging with flares it may or may not have a change with the, the his poor little eye may become uh, more tears or stuff stuffy nose or something like that but these are side locked headaches that uh, some people mistakenly diagnose as cluster headache and it's important to know about these, uh, these two. Uh, they're part of a family that, that we call the trigeminal uh, autonomic cephalages. Um, and it's important to know about these two because if you give the patient one medicine, indomethacin, they vanish as long as they're on the medicine. Um, number, so that was number uh, uh, 9 and 10. Uh, we skipped over 8, didn't we? Mr. Bubbles could have number 8. Uh, numular headache syndrome and, and, and the person will come in and they'll say I have a headache and it's right here and it's there all the time and occasionally there's jabs over top of it it doesn't move it's, it's not it doesn't go to the other side it's always right here and, and it got the name numular from from I guess Latin uh, numulus must be must mean coin because it means coin size so about the size of a quarter or something like that uh, and it stays there and it's thought to be due to a localized inflamed nerve ending. Uh, now number 11, wow we're so out of order, uh, some patients who have arthritis, so if Mr. Bubbles has arthritis deep in the neck there like the first second joint, sometimes people will have a lot of headache that kind of comes up into this area and it may be dependent upon position um, and, and the rest of the neck may be fine and people may not really call it neck pain but degenerative arthritis deep in the neck will tend to cause, if it's particularly if it's just on one side, will cause pain radiating up into the back of the head. Kind of like greater occipital neuralgia. To find that, regular x-rays don't tend to work very well and actually neither do MRI scans. Uh, if you're really looking for that, you need to do a, a CT scan. Uh, of that area to look at the bones. Um, referred pain from the shoulder. So Mr. Bubbles has been amputated but if you had shoulder pain sometimes you have people with a lot of muscle pain that will for some reason and it's not entirely clear why will radiate, they'll have some, some pain on the same side. Uh, usually they're able to say well you know my shoulder gets you know back there by my, by my uh, uh, scapula you know, the back of the shoulder gets really inflamed and then I get a headache. So that can give you a one-sided headache. There's another uh, headache, uh, number 13, which is cluster headache, which is, tends to be right around the eye. People will say, I have multiple attacks per day, occasionally every other day, and it's like a hot poker is going in my eye. And you, you just, they get up and they, they pace the floor and they have a change here in the eye in terms of you know, puffiness or, or tears and it's just terrible and they're fairly short and uh, that they're, they're, that's a tough one but they're always on the same side so it's sort of an eye pain but we call it a headache. Another one uh, which is very common uh, and rarely kind of a big deal but it, it's out there um, is ice pick head pains is what we used to call them when I was young and in training and now they've renamed it to uh, idiopathic stabbing headache and that's the person who says well I'm going along and it's, it, it usually occurs sort of in this region somewhere so I'm going along and all of a sudden it's like ah who stabbed me with that ah. for a few seconds it's really sharp and then it goes away and they may occur in clusters so it's very benign 
It's not from brain tumor. A lot of people get it. Uh, it's usually not even worth treating because it's not that bad and doesn't happen to, to uh, doesn't happen that frequently. Uh, I guess we're up to number 15. Um, and this is uncommon, and this is a, a unilateral or one-sided headache, uh, which occurs um, kind of as one episode, and that is uh, uh, every now and then we'll see somebody, usually in the emergency room, who's had some kind of trauma to the, to the neck region recently, and it's torn the lining of a blood vessel. We call that an arterial dissection. And there's an artery here in the front of the neck, the carotid artery, and there's an artery on the back of the neck called the vertebral artery. You can get a dissection with either one. And with this, if it's the one back here, the te you know, tearing of the lining of the blood vessel, you tend to get a headache up in this area. With the carotid, they tend to get a headache up in this area. It's a dangerous situation because strokes are, uh, often occur when you tear the lining of a blood vessel. And so that requires uh, urgent evaluation. But this is, it may be a, it's, it's a one-sided headache, but it's not something like, oh, I get these now and then, they come and go, and I've had them for years. It doesn't do that. It's the, you know, I fell off the back of the, the bike four or five days ago, and I've got this terrible headache now on one side. Uh, number 16, very rare, is the syndrome of the one red ear, red ear syndrome, where literally, I know it sounds like I'm making it up, where literally one ear will get really bright red, maybe a little swollen, and I have a headache up here. And it comes and goes. And it's, again, one of these odd nerve-caused uh, uh, nerve headaches. We don't know what it is in the central computing system that goes haywire that intermittently that happens. But if you have, uh, occasionally you have a headache on one side and that ear is sort of bright red, well, you might have the syndrome of the red ear. Uh, 17 and a half. Well, is uh, uh, a pair of headache things called uh, sunct and suna, S-U-N-C-T, S-U-N-A. Uh, sudden uh, unilateral neuralgic uh, uh, headache with conjunctival tearing, so sunct. Uh, many attacks per day, 30, 50, 100 attack attacks per day. Brief headaches, really intense on one side. Uh, some people think that the uh, sudden uniform uh, unilateral uh, neuralgic attacks Suna is kind of the, the, the big uh, set and that sunk is just a subset of that. Treatment for those is tough and fortunately they're quite rare. Well thank you Mr. Bubbles for participating in today's uh, talk about, about headaches. I'm quite sure you don't have any despite the multiple holes in your head and face. Mr. Bubbles says goodbye now.